the fallen state is amazing. Subscribe now. Welcome to The Fall of State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. I have a fan of the show with me today, and that's real nice. I have with me Sham Ibrahim, and Sham is a pop artist and actor known for making portraits for celebrity. Sham, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Real honor to be here. Well, I appreciate that. How did you find the show? Well, I'm always on YouTube just looking up, like, current social issues and watching people's videos and I ran across your videos and even though I did not agree with 99% <laughs> of what you said, right. I appreciate people who are true to themselves and I feel that you are yourself and you're speaking you know, your, your truth and I really appreciate that you listen to people. Well, I appreciate that very much. What do you disagree with me on? Like everything. Like <laughs> Trump is not the great white hope. He's not? He is the great white joke. Really? Me. Yes. And, and why would you say that? Um, what has he done? I mean, other than this tax thing, which it seems to benefit like the top 2%. I don't have stocks. I don't have any of these things that, that people are getting billions and billions of dollars off of. Most people don't. And I don't, um, I don't like the way the country has become more divisive, I feel, more divided. I mean, I know you feel that Obama, I've watched your show and I know your opinion, you, you feel that Obama is the one that divided the country, but I don't recall- You call the Messiah. <laughs> I don't recall the great Barack Obama uh, uh, dividing the country. I, I recall things being a lot more uh, copacetic between people, you know, back just a few years ago. Right, I remember when uh, the fall of Messiah, Barack was there, Remember, uh, uh, there were more police officers killed under his administration while he was in the White House than any other time. And that was because he was blaming the cops, white cops on everything uh, concerning cops and blacks. Okay, I think that, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to argue with your position right. on that. You know what I mean? Because you're, you seem to think that police brutality just doesn't exist right. and it's this made up thing. But I mean, how do you explain like Rampart when the police shot somebody and planted drugs on them? How do you explain Rodney King? I met Rodney King before he died. He was really affected by what happened to him. And I watched that video and you can never justify that kind of like gratuitous violence towards someone no matter what they did. So to me, watching you say that, it's <laughs> like, I just don't understand how you can think that. Rodney King brought that up on himself by not stopping when the cops asked him to stop. He put other people's lives at risk. He was on drugs. He was a big guy. And even when they got him down on the ground, he wouldn't stay down. And so you have to take aggressive action in order to keep a guy down, especially that big, when he's refusing to do it. You, don't you? I totally agree that any violation of the law, the police should handle it appropriately. Right. But what they did, and when you watch the video, they cross the line. He's already subdued, he's already, and they're continuing to beat him, you know what I mean, to, to a pulp. That's wrong, no Had matter what stopped. the, we don't live in a, I'm sorry, I didn't wanna interrupt. No, finish your point. Well, we don't live in the Philippines or Saudi Arabia or somewhere, we live in America where, you know, we value human life and human rights, and you just don't do that to people. Had he stopped when they asked him to, instead of speeding off, and they had to chase him down the freeway, would he have gone through all that? Um, he may not, I, I don't know, you don't know. I think that nobody can deny that, the, that it's happened at least once. Well, there are bad, some bad cops, but there's no such thing as police brutality. I think we have to agree to disagree. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't you know, I totally disagree. You totally disagree. I totally disagree. Totally disagree. Um, okay. Not to say that the cops are bad people because the police are amazing. They save lives. They've, 
they've saved my life. You know what I mean? I got, God bless the police. Yeah, like right. I, you know, and I, I don't for one second take our service person, our military, or police for granted. We need them. We love them. God bless them. And most, most are really, really good. But even if it happens once, which we all can agree, I think universally that it has happened at least once. So the fact that it happened at least once means that it is a thing and what, that it is a real thing. What do you think about this far left, liberal, radical, agitating group that was founded by black lesbians and homosexuals and social justice warrior that are worse than the KKK, Black Lives Matter? Okay, I don't recall Black Lives Matter lynching anybody. I don't remember them hanging nobody from trees, cutting people's heads off, you know, like you say they're worse than the KKK. Yes. I mean, the KKK has done those things. The KKK has hung people out of trees and killed people. I, I don't know where Black Lives Matter, you, you always bring up that they chanted that few members of Black no, Lives Matter. No, more than a few. They had a major rally going on. It wasn't the whole, every single person in Black Lives Matter. It was a group of people separate off, you know what I mean, from the collective whole thing of Black Lives Matter that chanted some awful chants towards what police. What do we want, dead cops? When do we want it now? I'm not saying they, they, they said that. We know that, but but they didn't. Do, I don't. I don't. I don't like uh, remember them lynching people just because they said that. That's what the KKK. Well, right did. after right after that, they started killing cops. Blacks went out and started killing cops. But Jesse, like you can't blame the actions of what some people vigilantes did it's kind of like it's kind of like the 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 radical you know islam violence that happened right. i mean you can't blame all of islam on this small percentage of radicals you know what i mean how about the fact that uh barack obama invited them to the white house uh, were you okay with that? Yes, because they had a point. If President, if the great white hope, President Trump, invite heads of the, uh, the skinheads or the KKK to the White House, would you be okay with that? No, I wouldn't be okay with that, and I wouldn't be surprised if he already did, because he's, he's, they already seem to be his biggest supporters and the people that he panders to. I mean, everything that he, his audience seems to be this, that, exactly what you said, the KKK, and the neo-Nazis, and those are the people that Where, he's- Where's your proof of that? Uh, the way, like in Charlottesville, when he immediately uh, said that there were good people on that side. He said you know both I mean? Before sides. He could, or, or whatever the he hell. He said there's good and bad on both. Whatever he said, you can't put any of that Nazi or any of that KKK stuff in, in the category of good because the ideology is hateful. So let me ask, it's, it's so amazing you brought that up right away. I was thinking the other day, Whenever uh, white guys hold a rally, and they have a right to hold a rally, they have permit to hold a rally, they showed up to their rally, they did not have on hoods, they were not dressed in black, they did not go with weapons with the intent to ta attack. Mm -hmm. So you had the far left radical Antifa people showing up to these people's rally with all types of weapons, and these people attack the white people who were there with a Rally. Did I say that's and, good? And, and yet the media made the white guys look like they're the troublemaker well, when, it's they really, the, the, when it really was when it really was the Antifa people who did it. How the were they able to make you see the white guys as the bad guys instead of Antifa? I see them both as the bad guys. Do you I see them I, as uh, Nazis and all that? I'm a reasonable person. I'm not picking up no you know weapons and <laughs> when I have an opinion and, and you know look how we're talking here. Yeah. We disagree, but we're talking right. right. So I, you don't see me throwing tables and, you know, doing stuff. Not yet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the transgender stuff and then I maybe, am. right? <laughs> right, that's right. But do you see Antifa as uh, uh, Nazi of evil? Of course. Or you do see that? Absolutely. Oh, I see okay. any kind of fascist group that says that my way is right and your way is wrong and we're gonna use violence to get our point across as wrong. Okay. That's not with the civilized world. Racist nurse fired for saying Stephen Clark deserved to A registered nurse was fired from her job after she shared her opinion about Stephen Clark. He was running from the police jumping over fences and breaking in people's houses, exclamation mark he deserved it for being stupid. 
Now, one thing that the great white hope did, he cut back on taxes. And as a result, up to 80% of the American people are getting more money on their paychecks. Does that mean anything to you? Is that what you believe? You didn't read the whole no, thing. No, my staff are getting it. Okay, but They're, it's going to expire. And, and I get it. And so, you know it's going to expire. But I'm not, I, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It's better to be getting that than to get nothing under okay. the Democrats when you agree to that. Uh, I would agree that the way you framed it, getting something is better than getting nothing, right. but that's not what it is. No, it is. We're getting something now back. We're well, the billionaires sure back. got a lot. The billionaires sure got rich. But let's just deal with this first, and then I'll, I'll, we'll go to the billionaires. So we're getting something back now, whereas under the Democrats, we got nothing back. They're just taking more and more out. This president is putting more and more back. Does that count for anything? It does not count for anything to me because really? he's at the same time cutting things that are really important. Like what? Oh, like the environmental fund, like the oh, endowment no. for arts, like all these things. Well, that, that needs to you go. Know, it, what? Yeah, let them Are pay. you trying to you can't, what, what world are you going to live in when, it, when it's gone? They can uh, sponsor that on their own, fire sponsorship, private who, From funding. who? Why, why doesn't he sponsor? He's so rich. That Hillary sponsor. She got a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. She yeah. doesn't have as much money as he does, and all his homies who are in the White House now. Right, he said drain the swamp, but didn't look drained to me because he brought every billionaire and known to man in the White House. What is that? He's okay. a good man. He made good decisions. He makes good decisions. What about Stormy Daniels? Was that a good decision? Well, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I wouldn't trust Stormy Daniels as far as I can throw her. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can't trust her. She made an agreement. She would not say anything. So you can't trust a person that lies. You can't keep your word. You're not worth anything. I trust it, Stormy a lot more than I trust our president. And I would rather have her president right now than him. That's wow, how strongly I that's feel. That's amazing. And so as far as the millionaires and the billionaires receiving tax cuts and things like that, what's wrong with that? Uh, what's wrong with it is that the people who are making that kind of money, I think, should be putting in more because I read and I believe this, that the billionaires could actually cure the problem of like starvation in the world and like, you know, certain things if they just like pooled their resources into the world instead of, you know, themselves. So I but think that doesn't I, seem fair. Well, that's because not fair. Let's say you work very hard mm -hmm. and, and, I do. and climbing the ladder, you're making buku money. And on the way that, up the ladder, I am working hard. Yeah, up the ladder, you're investing, you're making buku money, you're investing, you're working hard. Why should you be punished because you become a billionaire? Well, me personally, I don't want buku money. But if you I, did, why should you be punished for working hard and making buku money? That's what America is all about. Because you can do what you want. The reason that you should be, as you call it, punished is because other people who are, uh, have it less, the, human, the humanitarian, the human being inside somebody who has that much should care about people that don't have nothing. I mean, but I don't no, have, I'm not, I'm not rich, right, Jesse? I'm not a Kardashian. You look rich. But I, well, I got this at a thrift store, honey, not at Saks Fifth <laughs> Avenue, you know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> I, when I'm walking, I'm, you know what I mean? I shop at the thrift store, right? But I feel bad for the person that doesn't have food that's on the street. Why? Because at one point in my life, I know what that felt like. Instead of feeling bad for that person, say, get up off your butt, get over your problems, and make a life for yourself. That is mean. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because if I've been in that position before and I know other people, like let's say that not, you don't know everybody's circumstances, right? right. You're, you're assuming that this person that you're telling that to has two legs that can walk, is mentally fit, is like, you know, capable. No excuses. Huh? No excuses. So let me ask you about you. Okay. So you are a transgender. Yes, I am a transgender. So you yes. were born a, a boy, a male. Oh, yeah, for sure. You were born a male. Yeah. And so you were born a male. Mm -hmm. And so you were just walking down the road and you decided, <laughs> I want to be a transgender? If that's the way it worked, that somebody's walking down the road and they just decide they're going to be a transgender, <laughs> then people be flipping genders left and right faster than people flip pancakes at Denny's. What because made you, it doesn't happen like that. What made you decide, you know what, I just don't like being a boy? Okay, if when I was three years old, if you would have asked me, you would have said, listen, I got, I got a pill for you you can take, and you're just going to wake up the next day and be a girl, I would have taken it back then. But the technology just wasn't there, and it still isn't there, as you know. 
So to, to trans, for someone to transition, you have to go through all these procedures and all these steps, right? So I always, as a kid, knew and was told, my family's very conservative, you know what I mean? Growing up, we were, we were Arabic. Were you raised with your father and mother? Yes, I was. Okay, you're They're, Arabic? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're three years old mm -hmm. and you feel like a girl? Oh, yeah. At three years old? Maybe even before. And what does a girl feel like? Um, I would say that I will never know biologically what it feels like to be a, a natural born girl or woman, but I know what it is like to feel feminine internally. And to me, femininity, uh, from the way I was raised and brought up, femininity is, you know, um, just certain characteristics that I gravitate to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That I just am naturally uh, uh, accustomed to much more than the male characteristics of like, let's say like aggressiveness, sports, you know what I mean? Right. As a kid, I never played sports. I never liked sports. You know what I mean? I was always playing with dolls and you know, being, just, it, was just, it was just a natural thing. And of course, as a kid, right away, I was taught that that was wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was put in my place by my father, who was a really strong man, an amazing man, a great man, and he fit the paradigm of what you say, where it's like mother, father, father, head figure, mother. That was my household. Right. I forget how you say it. How do you say it? God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. Well, it was in all that, but he wasn't so much with the Christ because he was, you know, <laughs> right. Arabic. But, um, right. you know, it was, yeah, he it was, was all with, that. He uh, was with Allah Abba. Sure. <laughs> Sounds good to me. And right? so <laughs> did he see you acting like a girl at three years old and a little oh, older? Oh, yeah. And what would he say? I would get in trouble. I was not, it was not, you know, it was not, um, it was, I, I knew it to be something bad that I right. shouldn't do. And so did you try to hide it? Yeah, that's what happens to everybody, you know, who grows up either gay or transgender. If your uh, family, your society isn't, you know, um, doesn't accept you and understand you, then of course that's what you do. Right. You know? Um, and so what would your mother say about it? Um, my mother was the same. Okay. They both took the same position. You know what I mean? My father was a little more of the disciplinarian right. about it, but my mother took the same position. So you still feel like a woman? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, that doesn't change. And That's so change. you feel feminine? Sure, yeah, of course. I, you know, and I think now, you know, my, my feeling now is that gender is evolving. Like, I kind of used to be closed, believe it or not, even look at me now, you would never guess, but I used to be closed-minded myself about gender, and I thought it had to be man, woman, or trans. But now there's like a thousand different genders, so a person can be gender fluid. It's not even now, it's always been, but now people have uh, names for it and can describe it. So I don't put myself now in a box. I'm definitely transgender, I'm definitely in that category, but sometimes, like, like in my dating life, for example, I date men only as a full-on woman, not even like this with like boobs and hair, you know what I mean? That's the kind of, the men that I attract and the men that I like, I yeah. date as a female. Now, if I'm like running errands or, you know, going to the store and all this, I don't put on all this makeup and everything. I just look like, you know, maybe the busboy that she went and served you your dinner at your restaurant. I don't know. You know, I just look very... You look you like know, a boy when you don't dress when I up. When I don't, yeah. but And I haven't done surgeries or hormones or anything, which I don't... I, I don't... Maybe one day I will. Who mm -hmm. knows? You know what I mean? And anybody that does, that's great. You know, but for me right now, it just hasn't, you know... It hasn't happened because, like I said, I'm not Kardashian, so I can't just go buy right. all these plastic surgeries and everything. And so uh, you still gotta, have all your boy body parts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. does that feel weird putting on a dress and makeup and eyelashes and things like that, and then you have boy body parts? I'll be honest with you, Jesse. The men like it. The I men no like joke. It. The the men like it. What they do you mean do. the men like that, it? I, like I date guys like this, uh -huh. but even more, like I said, feminine looking than I am now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, the men they don't care what's from the waist below. They kind of they it's kind of like a turn on for them. And I don't consider those guys gay because they're looking at me like the image of like a it's woman. like a female, but it's like a chick with a you know what? I don't want to say because right. I want to cuss around here. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm trying to be respectful. You're a pastor and everything, that. so I'm not. You yeah. Know what I mean? So you're not normal. I mean, 
being a transgender man dressing in women uh -huh. clothes and, and like this and women dressing in men clothes is not a normal thing. It's due to a trauma. You know, something's happened along the way and you overreact it and you become like what you overreact to. It's not like normal, normal for a man to dress like a woman or feel that way or a woman to dress and feel like a man. That's your perception and your analysis that that the if you were you should you should and I prayed before this interview that maybe <laughs> you would open my mind a little bit and right. maybe I would open yours. You're right. So I, my, if if God is listening, I hope God will enter your heart right now and just open it up a little bit to maybe feel what it's like to be in my shoes instead of just looking at it from your shoes because you were born comfortable the way you are. So you don't know what that feels like. So to just say that this is just a feeling and it's not the real thing is not really fair because you, you didn't go through it. So you don't know. But you know? it's not the real thing. I mean, I understand the trauma, but... There ain't no trauma. What's the trauma? Uh, I'll tell you what the trauma is in a minute, but um, it's, not a, it's, not, it's not normal. It's not the real thing. But in your mind, it may f seem to be real because of, you know, the trauma. Maybe you're too close to your mother or you resented your father. And, and you I love my parents. I uh, don't have no resentment. In were fact, you molested or anything as a child? No. 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 So was your mother an angry woman while she was pregnant with you? <laughs> no, no. They were. My parents are the epitome of like the per, like the perfect <laughs> nuclear family. Like my dad was a working dad. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, they were. My dad was a very you know strong and wonderful man. My dad is an educated. He's PhD. You know he's engineer. Uh, I don't know what like. This trauma that you're looking for, or whatever, is, is is your explanation. That's what I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to. You came up with this equation, like trauma equals transgender, right? And like I'm trying to tell you, and I hope I can open your heart to see that that's not what it is. It's just the way that, just like, just like you have dark hair, I'm transgender. Just like. You know, you have brown eyes. I'm trying. It's not even a big deal. But I don't know? feel my hair and eyes. I'm not feeling anything about it. But let me ask. Uh, you you think would God be feeling something about it if the rest of society, uh, if there wasn't one other person on earth with dark hair and dark eyes. In, in other words, if you were the minority, because transgender, we are the minority. But it doesn't mean it's not normal. You know what I mean? So it's just like an albino person, right? right. Might feel something about their albino it's because they stand out. But you know why they feel that way, right? Because society would uh, tease them about it or whatever they do, that person would become angry about it, being treated that way. And the moment you become angry about it, it awakens something inside of you, those emotions, because in that very moment that you become angry, you're traumatized. And so it awakens those emotions and now you don't feel like yourself anymore. You feel like a transgender. I disagree. No, that's what caused it. I disagree. But what if, caused if someone it is God about made me this way and loves me this way, and, and it's a miracle. Why and do you everybody who's watching who is a transgender or is a gay person don't ever think that it's caused by nothing but nature and God, and God loves you. So you think God made you a male, mm -hmm. and he would... Uh, confuse you like that to make you think you're a female? No, see, God didn't confuse me. What confused me was the, my parents and everybody else telling me that there's something wrong with me. And even, you know what I mean? And that, or, you know, that, the, which does, it doesn't confuse me now because I know who I am, but you know, you telling people that trauma causes, that's what confuses people. Right. But the feelings that people have are who they are. Do you I mean, nobody just, no, also Jesse, let me just, one more thing, I hope, pray that this helps you understand. Would somebody really go against everything that you call normal, like all this society, the way people dress, the way people are, husband, wife, the way things are, would somebody who's growing up and trying to fit in the world really go against all that if it wasn't really the truth of who they were? They would not. They wouldn't go through all that if they knew the truth or what it was. And the reason that they're going through it is because they have not overcome the trauma. And so they, they, they and, and, and in that fallen state, and you do believe that human beings are in a fallen state until they overcome that, right? No. 
You don't believe human no, beings have I, a fallen state? No. In fact, I think the world is getting better. And the Dalai Lama, he, when Piers <laughs> Morgan interviewed him, he asked him, what do you think of the world? Is it getting better? And he said, yes. And the reason is because when you look at the world history, we haven't had a World War III since World War II. There hasn't been a mass genocide. So I think actually a smaller, smaller person, I do believe some people are in a fallen state. Yeah. D Donald Trump, <laughs> hello. That's you the wrong I mean? one. Huh? He's not now. He's not mean? in a fallen state now. He's risen above it. That's why the children of the lie are afraid of him. But <laughs> let me ask, but you make a good point. In, whatever happened to you, the trauma that happened. I can't even come on that. Go ahead. The trauma. Uh -huh. The trauma that happened to mm. you caused you to believe that that's who you really are. And because no one at an early age showed you how to overcome that trauma, you grew in that. And then, and then it convinced you that you're not a male, you're a female. And well, that's why you're going through it. Even with the teeth in and the stuff that you had to go through, I'm sure, you didn't like that either. You overreacted. The more you overreact to things, you become like what you're overreacting to. Now, had your parents had to know how to tell you, look, son, uh, whatever happened, you have to forgive. Don't hold on to it. That thing would have, that identity would have been taken away from you, that spirit. Uh, and then you would have had your boy okay, spirit let, back. Okay, let's do this right now, Jesse, since that's the problem, since that's my problem, right? And let's, not just you, all let, the men. Tell me what this trauma is so I can overcome it, and let's see if I still want to put this dress on. You let's ask God right now, overcome my trauma, Lord. So I mean, and I bet you... I, not even I bet you, I just asked for it. Let's see. Jesus, Lord, I love you. I believe you. Thank you for everything. Please <laughs> overcome my trauma so I can stop being a transgender. You're playing with him I'm now. He's not going to do anything like that. I still feel the way I did. So let me ask, if you were serious about it, he would help you overcome. Of course I'm. I asked God. See, that's the thing. You don't know how many times, not just me, but millions right, of that's transgender right. people laid in their bed at night looking at their ceiling saying, please, God, please yeah. I counsel me. with people. You know? I know what you mean. So I did that all yeah. my life. I did that until I, until I finally learned and knew God opened my heart, just like I want to open yours, to let me know that I'm okay. I made you this way and he made didn't me make go. You that way. Let me ask you, the one thing you did not do in all your praying and all your pleading and all your asking God, the one thing you did not do Forgive whomever did this to you. Whomever caused the trauma, you did not forgive, and that's why you didn't overcome that spirit that made a home in you. I live by the motto of forgiveness. At that time, you didn't know. I do now, and I, I have, I did, you're right. I, I learned that I don't want to just become argumentative, but right. I want to listen to what you're saying yeah. and respond to the truth. Right. And the truth is, you're right. In my young life, uh, I didn't just forgive everything that's and all right. this stuff. But as an adult, why, I've learned and I've grown, especially in my faith, in my spirituality, I have grown and learned to forgive. And I immediately forgive people now. I never hold on right. to anything. You but know I, mean? I want to guarantee you, without a doubt, has someone come along while you were younger and people were teasing you, you were going through this, you were embarrassed, and they had, had a conversation with you, found out what the problem was, and told you, you know what, no big deal, forgive them. And then God would have forgiven you for being angry at them. And he would have taken that thing away from you. Then you would have grown up as a man. I want to guarantee you that that would have confused me further. No, it would have freed you And kept me up. further from being happy. And honestly kept me more in a prison uh, than ever. No, you, you, you believe that, but that's not true. Do you believe God is a perfect God? Yeah, And do, do you believe that? All that he does is perfect and good. Yeah. Then why would he do this to you? Because it is perfect and good. It's because not. Trans yes, of course it is. Tra transgender is perfectly perfect and good. And in fact, God wouldn't have even and taken it this far to where you could transition and you could do God all these didn't amazing do that. things. Your father, the did. devil, did that. <laughs> my, my father. That ain't my father. What? I can tell you that right now. That's the one religion I am not down for is the Satanism. I'm not. Well, I thought you accepted all religion. I accept of everything good, but, but Satanism not? to me is, is evil. So let me do this. Um, so do you? Is it possible that I'm telling I'm right in what I said? If someone has stopped you from being angry when you were young and growing in this thing, you could have overcome. No, you're wrong. Amazing. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're very wrong. And I hope you don't tell that to people too much because honestly, Jesse, if you really want to help people, I hope in your minister, ministry, when they do come to you with this, instead of telling them, like, you know, trying to find this thing that they need to forgive and trying to, you know, whatever it is, I mean, I hope you do, of course, teach them the message of forgiveness, but I also hope you teach them the message of acceptance and accepting themselves. Ooh, There's an entire show called ID Channel, a network dedicated 24 hours a day to women getting abused, murdered, sexualized, and violated. And you are too, sister. And trans it's women the same. violence, and you do nothing for them. Trans women are in men's prisons. And what have you done for them? What have you done for women? <laughs> lots of things. Yeah. I've done lots of things violence. too. You don't I know my violence. life. Don't sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Enough. But at one point, you you saw men dress in drag, and you knew it was wrong. <laughs> Jesse, remember the, you knew it was you're wrong. You're really trying to get to the bottom of like. But at, the, wasn't that, I isn't that true? That, though? But isn't that true? At one point, before you accepted it, you looked at it and you knew it was wrong. Isn't that right? Uh, I knew what my parents had taught me, which is yes, that they had taught me that it was wrong. And you and saw I it had as to, wrong. I had to open my heart and mind and educate myself and learn that, in fact, no human behavior that is not hurting somebody else is wrong, especially, especially gay, like, you know, the issue of gay and gay marriage and everything, which I know is, you know, a big right. deal for you. How could love between two people be wrong That's in That's not love. Way? That's love in a fallen state, which is not real love. I got to ask you this because of time. Okay. Your parents are Middle Eastern? Yes, they are. And so, so you are, a Muslim, are they Muslims? Well, my dad was raised Islam. Okay, my mom was raised Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. And when they met, they met in Canada, and they came to America, and then they were kind of just atheists. They didn't really have religion. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? But we grew up around other different faiths. Like I grew up in Illinois, so I had Jewish friends, I had Christian friends, I had, you know, we would go to the Catholic church. I went to, I'd seen everything from a young age. You when know? did, at what age did you come completely out like this? 14 years old. And did your parent, your father and mother accept it? Nope. And they still don't? They do now. They accept it now? They do now. It's all about opening your heart and educating. So you can go to your father's house dressed like this? Oh yeah. You can go dressed like this oh, and he yeah. welcome you? Of course. I mean, I, I'm, I'm my father's child. So, I mean, that is a good father. That to me is a, that is a, unconditional love is what a good parent gives to their child. How, how, how did you convince him to accept it? Uh, through, I think, not just education and opening his heart, but also through him seeing and watching my life. And I achieved and accomplished things in life I never dreamed I would. I've been on television. I've been, you know, in, it, my artwork has, has, you know, made the news so many times. And so when he saw that and he saw that I was being true to myself and living myself and being a successful person and a good person in the world, his heart changed. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister. Yes, I do. Does she accept this? Of course. Will she allow you to come over dressed like this? 
she would probably give me some clothes from her closet that I could really? maybe try on. Yeah, we, she gave me for Christmas something that looks very similar to this. Is yeah. she younger or older? Uh, she's one year older. Do you plan to have children? Maybe one day, who knows? Anything's possible, right? So the question would be then, if God made you this way, and he knew that you were going to want children, why did he make the insides of you um, available so that you could have children? Because why the beautiful would thing is, is that God no also babies? invented adoption. Just like my dear friend Fenton Bailey and his husband Billy, they adopted a beautiful little boy named Nolan from Vietnam. But and why would he make it possible for you to have one? He did. He made adoption. The Lord made adoption. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So do you believe there's good and evil? Of course. You believe there's good and evil? Of course. And how do you tell one from the other? Uh, from my internal self and looking inside myself. No Bible or book can tell me what's right or wrong, but I know in my heart it's wrong to kill, it's wrong to steal, it's wrong to hurt people, it's wrong to judge people. And Do you like alpha males or beta males? For dating, I like the alpha. I like me some alpha male for dating. <laughs> and yeah. why? Because that's just what I like. That's just what I'm into. What's the difference between an alpha and a, and a, like, a beta male? Like, let's say like a marine is like an alpha male, right? Uh -huh. And um, a guy who like, I don't know, uh, works at like, you know, a metaphysical bookstore or something <laughs> is a is the other kind. You know what I'm saying? So, the, the girly guys. Yeah. You support the Second Amendment? Oh, I, I support got it. the Second that. Amendment, don't but I don't like that. guns at all. Oh, so let's say some maniac guy see you walking down the road, uh -huh. and he come it's up happened. to you to kill you. It's happened. I've been attacked. And if you had a gun, would you kill him first? No, I wouldn't. You would let him kill you? I don't think I could pull that trigger. Uh, but I don't believe in guns. I don't like them. I don't even like to touch them. I don't like to look at them. I think they're horrible. I think the world would be much better with no guns. Really? Yes. Amazing. And no guns. Is you the, think like a liberal woman. You a I, liberal woman? <laughs> I am a liberal woman. That is true. And you know what, Jesse? I'm not just liberal. I'm like a radical liberal yeah, woman. Uh, like yeah. when I go this time and vote, I'm putting uh, d Democrat, Democrat, Dem I'm not even look at the thing. <laughs> you are known for giving celebrities portraits of, your, of themselves. Of course. That's my... That. How did you get going with that? Well, I meet a celebrity like you and I say... Look at this. I have a portrait for you, okay? Oh, I made one for you, Jesse, because I love you, okay? That's amazing. And, um, I, well, I put, it's a, I put all your sayings on here, okay? You can see that's all your sayings. So I put, that's amazing on there. The Great White Hope. Uh, you can read them. I'm not going to read them. <laughs> you, you read them. What, He's a girly man. Right here. Less big ends are not real women. <laughs> what else? Racism doesn't exist. It's all an illusion. Do you believe that? Hell no. No, really? I do not believe that. No. Wow. It looked like me. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Jesse. That's I was afraid I'd give it to you say that don't look like me. No, oh, the thank big you. head that and makes everything. Me feel good. No. <laughs> that makes me feel good. <laughs> so I read that you've done this for Donald Trump? I did one of Donald Trump. I gave it to Katy Perry. Yeah. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. I did. Yeah. I, I drew him as a baby playing with America. Would you like to have a man like Trump? that take charge like him, they're the same kind of personality. No, you would I would like, like to have a woman uh, in charge and have her perspective since we have had 45 men now. I think the next one needs to be a woman. I do like the idea of Oprah Winfrey, but I don't know about another person from show business. Oprah is very insecure, you don't want her. She's very she insecure. Is? I yeah. don't think so. You, you, you can't be insecure and make that kind of money. Um, yeah, what she did, she babied everybody. She made them feel good. She gave them cars and she told them how wonderful they are. And she made them feel good about being wrong. And that's bad? And then Isn't that a good her, thing? They rewarded her for making them feel good about being wrong. I didn't ask you about the wall, but are you as oh. happy as I am that the Great White Hope is building a beautiful big wall around the border? Um, I think that he should pay for that wall instead of Mexico because if I wanted to put a door on my house, like a front door, I would pay for it and I'll ask my neighbor to pay for it. And also if he's going to put that wall, what about Canada? Don't they need a wall too? I mean, that's a border too. Well, we're it? not having a kind of problem with Because Canada that's not fair. You know, you're about that. fairness. I mean, don't we need, don't we need both? We'll get around to that if it goes out of control. <laughs> well, so they could just swim across the thing. What is a man? 
A man? What is a man? You mean biologically speaking? Yeah, what is a man? I, well, if you well want, we know that a man with the body parts, but other okay. than that, what's a man? Okay, a man is a human being and somebody who values uh, other life as much as his own and protects it and um, is true to himself and true to God. What is love? Uh, love is the greatest thing in the world and it's the, sa it's the one thing that could save the world. Do you have love? I have so much love for all of humanity. I love you too, Jesse. Well, thank I really you. do. Well, thank you. Did you Even though that? you look handsome, not in that way, you know what I'm saying? Did you bring that for me? Of course I brought thank that for you. you. So That's much. a present. I'm so honored yeah. that you have me on this show, and thank you for listening to me. Yes, do you have, in, in, in one minute or so, do you have a question or anything for me that you wanted to ask? I want to know if in meeting me at all and talking to me, was I able to open your heart just a little bit up, maybe towards transgender people are understanding us better a little bit? Well, I already understand okay. transgender people. I know that a spiritual trauma happened. They were not able to overcome it. And so they grew in that by overreacting to situations. And I believe that in their minds, because their mind connection to the feelings, they really believe that they're what they're dressing, whether it's a man or a woman. So I do understand that. And that's why I don't hold any grudges against anyone, because you really can't help yourself. Well, I think, Jesse, yeah. you need some more transgender friends, <laughs> and I'll go out to coffee with you anytime. Anytime you want to sit down and just hang out, just hit me up. Eventually, if you saw what it's like walking in our shoes, you're not going to think that it's a trauma. Well, I counsel with them. I told, I, and some have overcome and some have not. My final question, did you have fun? I had a wonderful time, Jesse. <laughs> God bless you, and thank you so much for having me on the show. You're welcome, and thank you for coming. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.